It's a quarter after the top of the hour. I hope you're on time. It's one of the most anticipated decisions from the U.S. Supreme Court. Justices set to announce their ruling on former President Trump's presidential immunity claim within the next couple of hours, which would directly impact the Republicans' reelection campaign. President Trump was hit with four federal criminal charges by Special Prosecutor Jack Smith, accusing uh, the former president of trying to overturn the 2020 election results. And his attorneys have been fighting to delay the trial, claiming the former president's actions are covered by presidential immunity. Today's decision could spell the end of Smith's case against Trump and set a new precedent for future presidents as well. Joining me right now, trial attorney Brian Claypool. Good to see you always, Brian. Let's play what if. Should the Supreme Court grant immunity surrounding these charges brought by Jack Smith, what happens to all of the federal cases that the former president is facing? Hey, Adrian, great to be back with you. Yeah, if the U.S. Supreme Court does that, then these cases go away. But I don't think the U.S. Supreme Court is going to do that. I, I, I think what the court is going to do is they are likely to send the matter back to the district court, so the trial court, to make a determination on each of these matters as to whether Trump's conduct constitutes an official act. Adrian, that is the million dollar question. Mm -hmm. Was Trump's conduct, quote, an official act or was it a private act? In fact, one of the justices in the oral argument, she asked Trump's lawyer, hey, what if there was a military coup, right? What if Trump ordered a military coup? Is that an official act or a private act? And at one point, Trump's lawyer even admitted that there are some acts by Trump that are not official acts. So just to be clear, if it goes back to the trial court and a determination is made that it is not an official act, then there is no immunity and the trial is moving forward. But in terms of his attorneys arguing that this ruling isn't just about the former president, this would actually either, depending upon what they decide, defend or damn any and all official acts by a sitting president, Did you see in oral arguments were some justices actually sympathetic to the concerns that Trump's legal counsel had? Yeah, I did did see that some of the justices were were sympathetic. But at the end of the day, what was articulated by many of the justices was as follows, that there are two competing interests in deciding this case. One is, do we leave a sitting president boundless? What do I mean by that? That he or she can just commit any act whatsoever. They could order, you know, uh, arguably that a, a a foreign country leader be killed, for example. It, you know, it, is that still an official act? I mean, so that's that's what they've got to they've got to determine. Do you just let a president engage in unabated behavior? That's the one interest. The second interest that the court talked about was was political motivation, prosecutorial misconduct. Mm -hmm. And the the U.S. Supreme Court discussed this in oral argument about whether there would be some kind of penalties if, for example, the DOJ came down and indicted another uh, former president. So they've got to make sure that there's no political impetus uh, to indict a former president and then weigh that against, can we just let our presidents do whatever they want? But can I just get clarity there on this case, this particular instance, is it about allowing presidents to do whatever they want? Or is it about those individual charges brought by Jack Smith that the court has to decide whether they're official or not official? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, you're 100 percent right. That's what I mean. They're going to have this case is going to be sent back, I think, to the district court. And each of the allegations in the indictment, Adrian, there's going to be have to be a determination made likely by the U.S. District Court judge as to whether each allegation in the indictment constituted an official act. You said at the beginning, we currently don't have any laws on this. We don't even have a a U.S. federal regulation defining what an official act is. There's no legal precedent. So this case could be the first ever to try to define what constitutes an official act because we don't have We don't have a guideline or a roadmap for that. That's likely what's going to happen. Each allegation has got to be looked at separately. Is that an official act or not? If, if If it is, then there's going to be immunity granted. If not, no immunity. You know, my gut feeling tells me that, you know, most, if not all of the conduct related to to January 6th is not an official act. It's not conduct by former president Trump where he's trying to carry out uh, an, an official duty 
within his presidential capacity. Well, can we just remind uh, America about exactly what some of these charges are? I think the most confusing or unexplained portion of the case is the allegations of the former president assembling false electors. Can, can you discuss any of these actual individual charges? Yeah, that, that's an, another fantastic question. I mean, think about that allegation. The, the, the allegation is that Trump had s- some people pretend to be an elector stating that the, that the that there was fraud associated, you know, with the election, and and focus on that. It, you know, in my opinion, even taking off my legal hat, that is is not an official act in office. That is an act to propel a personal interest to to have an election overturned. Another example is the tweets. That's a big part of this appeal, uh, the Supreme Court decision. All these tweets sent by President Trump and the tweets are arguably incendiary. They're they're talking about this is not a, a fair election and arguing fraud. That again, is is does that is that is that what we consider to be a, a duty in, in office? To me, Adrian, to give your viewers an example, here's what I think is an official act. You make a decision on the border. How are we going to handle the border? Are we going to have more patrol at the border? It, whether you like the decision or not, that is a an act within your duty as a president, not having fake electors. I mean, that's arguably subject to an indictment in and of itself. So I don't think that'll ever be deemed as, as an official act, Adrian. We're going to look into it. We're going to dig into it, especially as the clock ticks towards uh, the ruling expected to take place within the next, it could be as soon as 40 minutes from now. Uh, Brian Claypool, good to be with you. Thank you so much. You bet. Thanks for having me, Adrian. Absolutely.